Lamb chop? Oh, there you are. Lamb chop, how come you got your head inside the pillowcase? What'd you say? I said, I'm doing something. What are you doing, developing film in the dark? <laughs> Big ha ha, dandelion. You know, you're as funny as the chicken pox. Now, if you don't mind. Hiya, how's everybody tonight? Hi, Sherry. Hi, Dandelion. Good evening, Sherry. Good evening, Mr. Barely. Uh, aren't we missing a few? Where's Lanchop? She's in her bed, you see. Oh, yeah, I thought her bed looked a little lumpy. Lanchop? Lanchop? Oh, hi, Sherry. <laughs> nice night, isn't it? Uh, yes. Why do you have your head inside your pillowcase? Um, well, well you see, I, I, I wanted to see what it was going to be like when you turned out the lights. Why don't you just stick around and find out? Oh, Lamb Chop, your pillow looks a mess. Here, let me fluff it for you, darling. No, that's okay. I like it. Oh, Lamb Chop, look at that. Cookie crumbs. You've got cookie crumbs coming out of your pillow. Yeah, look at that. How come? Well, you said I couldn't eat cookies in my bed, but you never said I couldn't eat them in my pillow. But, Lamb Chop, if you're not going to share, it's not polite to eat cookies in front of the others. I know. That's why I ate them inside the pillowcase. I see. All right, well, everybody's... <gasps> Mr. Barely, is Grizzly asleep already? No, I ain't cheering, darling. I'm just lying here in bed, singing myself my favorite lullaby, quiet like. Dum, 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 dum. Oh, I do love that dumb song. Lullaby and good night. Move my bed near the phone so I won't have far to reach, just in case E.T. phones home. What do you think? Give me a break. Um, nothing personal, Grizzly, but Sherry, I, I really think you ought to sing us a lullaby the way you always do. So you say you want a lullaby, you've got to have a lullaby, or maybe you'll start crying or get sick. Well, you're gonna get a lullaby. I'm giving you your lullaby. But I'm warning you right now, it's gonna be quick. Quick now, fall asleep, please, you gotta try. All that I have time for is a quick little lullaby. I don't even have time to tell you why. All that I can give you is a quick little lullaby. Go to sleep fast, take a nap now. Sure, it's hard to jump right in it, but I'm leaving in a minute, and you'll have to manage it somehow. Sandman, speed it up, please, you gotta fly. Normally I wait for you with a tender song or two, but tonight I've got to do a quick little lullaby. That's it, good night. That's it? That's it. No second verse? Then no, that was it. All of it. Now good night. How about kisses? That would be nice. Kisses. You want kisses? Okay, I'll give you kisses. You call that a kiss? A butterfly kiss is better than that. A kiss is a kiss as long as my lips are puckered. You yeah, felt like your pucker was a little pooped. You want to know what I think? If you think fast, yes. I think you have some place to go tonight. You're going to leave us, Sherry? Without a sitter? Alone in this house? We don't even have a watchdog. We don't even have a watch puppy. Oh, come on, Dandy. You know I'd never leave you alone. I'm going downstairs. What's waiting for you downstairs? Hey, she must have some ice cream melting down there. There is no ice cream, melting or otherwise. There happens to be a new TV show coming on the air any minute now. But you hardly ever watch TV. I know, but I hear this show's a goodie, and I really would like to see it. It comes on right this minute? Not this minute. Well, don't you have a minute for us? Yes, but what can I do in a minute? You could put on a sock. You could fry an egg. You could put on the other sock. And then you could eat a fried egg in your stocking feet. In the course of a minute, there are nice things you could do. You, you could, could call, call a friend up just to say hello. You could eat half 
a cookie, tell a joke, well, maybe two. You could write your name a dozen times or so. You could scratch where you're itching or skip twice around the kitchen. Get the playing cards and go a little trick. In this fraction of an hour, you can smell a pretty flower. Say I love you 24 times. If you're quick, you could think of a cousin you would really like to see. And a ball that rolled underneath your bed. You could hug your kid brother. Give a big kiss to your mother. Give your little dog a good rub on his head. It's true, in the course of a minute, there are nice things you can do. Okay, okay, one more minute. I'll try to tell a one-minute story. But then it is time for you all to go to sleep. Why? Lab chop. You know, you always ask why this and why that. Yeah. Did you ever wonder why it is that you have to wash your hands before you eat while cats wash after meals? Do they? Yeah. Why? Wait a minute. Are you going to tell us the real reason? No, but I am going to tell you a real sweet story. A long time ago, there was a polite pussycat who was proud of having good manners. One day, he caught a sparrow for his dinner. How do you do, he said politely to the bird. Please excuse me for eating you up, but I am hungry. And he was about to pop the bird into his mouth and eat it feathers and all, when suddenly the sparrow spoke. My dear sir, a real gentleman does not eat without washing his hands and face. If you were really a courteous cat with fine manners, you'd wash first, too. The cat thought about what the bird had said, and he agreed. He put down the sparrow and began to lick his paws and rub them over his whiskers. But the moment he let go of the bird, it flew away, and the cat had to do without dinner. He was so mad at being tricked by that spunky sparrow that he said, Gentlemen or no gentlemen, as long as I live, I will eat first and wash afterwards. That's what he taught all his children to do, and that's what all cats do to this very day. Well? Well, what? Did I tell the story in a minute? Sixty seconds. Um, let's see. The big hand was pointing to my nose, and the little hand was pointing to my belly button, and... Oh, I forgot. You can't tell time, can you, Lamb Chop? Well, I could count. Well, that's a beginning. So, you know, to count off a second, you just have to say, I know, one second, two seconds. No. No? No. You say one locomotive. What's that? What's what? A locomotive. A locomotive is a railroad car that pulls the rest of the train, but just say it. One locomotive. Yeah, that's, that's about a second. Huh? In the time it takes you to say one locomotive, a second ticks by. So if you say one locomotive, that means a second has gone by? Right. If I say one second, will a locomotive have gone by? <laughs> I doubt it, Dandy. Well, how do you count two seconds and three seconds and, you know, like that? By adding locomotives, but in rhythm. Oh, I got it. You mean like one locomotive is one second and two locomotives is two. A three locomotives is three seconds and, Sherry, how do you do? Um, almost. Not quite, but almost, Grizzly. It's more like one locomotive, two locomotive, three locomotive. That was exactly three seconds. <laughs> Can you count a second? There's one easy way. The words one locomotive take just one second to say. And if you need more seconds, which you might indeed, why just add locomotives till you have all that you need. But, Sherry, if one locomotive is one second, how long is the train that makes up a minute? There are 60 seconds in a minute. Now, if you count one locomotive, two locomotives, up to 60 in a rhythm, we will fill a minute together. Can you count a second? There's one easy way. The
the words one locomotive take just one second to say and if you need more seconds which you might indeed why just add locomotives till you have all that you need does it come as quite a shock knowing that you can keep time like a clock and you'll discover the difference it makes when you know you can measure just how long anything takes you can time music or walk in some place you can time all the runners run in a marathon race you can time how long you bake a great big wonderful chocolate cake maybe your timings may be slightly wrong but it's true you can really time things by counting along like you just reached the end of a one minute song Now you count the locomotives once again so softly that I can hardly hear them as they chug by. And when your train has 60 locomotives, that will mean 60 seconds, a minute will end, and so will my story. We'll help you count, Land Chop. Yes, but you start. A mother and father were fighting over what to call their newborn son. The wife wanted to name the boy after her father. The husband wanted to name him after his father. So they said to a judge, tell us what to do. The judge asked the wife, what is your father's name? Sylvester, she said. He asked the husband, and what is your father's name? Sylvester, said the man. <laughs> well then, asked the judge, what is this whole argument about? The wife said, my father was a great scholar. His father was a thief. I can't see naming my son after a thief. The judge said, I suggest you name the boy Sylvester. Leave the rest to time. If your son turns out to be a scholar, you'll know he was named after his mother's father. If he becomes a thief, it will be clear he was named after his father's father. And that's just what they did. You know, under the circumstances, I would have named my son Joe. Why Joe? That's a lot easier for me to say than Sylvester. Whatever. All right. Now, good night, everybody. I'll see you in the morning. Suddenly I get a feeling you don't like telling us stories anymore. I love telling you stories, and in the morning I am going to tell you all the story of the TV show that I'm going to watch right now downstairs. Boy, that must be some show for you just to shove us aside and run off like that. I don't know. I haven't even seen the show yet. Then how do you know you want to watch it? Well, I read about this TV show in all the newspapers. They said it was good. So when does it start? Yes. How many locomotives? Let's see. In about two minutes. That's 120 locomotives from now. Oh, well, since we have a minute or two, if you'll stand by for moral support, Jerry, I think I might be able to uh, squeeze in a story for them. It goes once upon a time. Mr. Barely, please. Jerry, I only have a minute. Let's not waste a bit of it. Hungry wolves used to roam the hills. This was a problem for the lone shepherds who guarded the sheep, but were unable to save the sheep when the wolves attacked. And so one day the shepherds held a meeting and decided that if one of them should see a wolf coming out of the shadows, he would call, Wolf! Wolf! And the others would come running with clubs and noisemakers to frighten the wolves away. However, one shepherd boy thought it would be a funny joke if he were to call, Wolf! Wolf! in the night when everybody was asleep and he did and of course everybody came running in their pajamas all ready for trouble but there were no wolves and when the other shepherds realized that they had been awakened for a joke they were mad unfortunately the next night wolves really did attack the young shepherds flock and in panic he cried wolf wolf but the other shepherds not wanting to be made fools of again merely turned over and went back to sleep nobody helped the shepherd boy who lost all his sheep that night because he had cried wolf just for the fun of it that's it that's the way it ends Wolves killing sheep is supposed to put me in the mood for sweet dreams? Oh, Lamb Chop, I'm sure Mr. Barely didn't think you'd take the story personally. Personally? My name is Lamb Chop. One of them dead sheep could be my Aunt Sarah. I'm sorry, Lamb Chop. Oh, yeah, me too. I didn't think that to put me to sleep. I need a story that makes me feel good when it's done. Really? Uh-huh. Gee, that's weird. No, it isn't. 
That's the way I feel, too. Oh, yes, we all like to be left smiling at the end of a story. I love a happy ending. I'd rather laugh than cry. I love it when the hero winds up getting the girl, winning the game. Fireworks light up the sky Some people like sad movies That's all they go to see They say it makes their cares and worries Seem a lot less Could be, I guess That doesn't do it for me Okay, if that's what you like, I am going to turn over a new leaf. From now on, I'm only going to tell stories with happy endings. Why don't you start right now? I'll turn over, and you can tell me one. Okay. Okay, why don't you all turn over just for the record? And the next thing we'll hear is Mr. Bailey telling a story with a happy ending. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Bearley, you owe us a story with a happy ending. Quick, 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 tell it. And then I'm going to turn into the invisible woman. Really? No. He just won't see me anymore. Will we be able to hear you? Only from a distance, Dandelion. I'm going downstairs. Now hurry up, Bearley. Okay, here goes. <coughs> what are you doing? <coughs> Clearing my throat. <coughs> Sounds like your moped won't start. A girl had milked her cow and was on her way to town to sell the milk. The flowers smelled sweet, the sun was warm, the sky was blue, and she felt good. And as she walked, she balanced the pail of milk on her head, and she said to herself, Hey, this pail of milk is going to make me enough money to buy eight eggs. I'll put the eggs under my four best hens. The eggs will hatch into eight chicks. The chicks will grow big and fat, and they will lay dozens of eggs that'll hatch into chickens, too. And then I'll sell all the chickens and buy myself a fancy dress to wear to the parties. And everybody will ask me to dance, and all night long I'll dance and twirl. And as she talked, she did a dance step. But when she started to twirl, the milk pail slipped off her head, the milk was spilled, and her plans were spoiled because she had counted her chickens before they hatched. Now this tale has a meaning, I hope you catch. 
which is don't count your chickens before they hatch. Well, that's it. If that's a happy ending, Darth Vader is the tooth fairy. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Oh, dear. Calling for Bambi is not going to help. Look, Mr. Bailey, I'll tell you what. I'm going to show you what a story with a happy ending sounds like. Oh, that's very nice of you, Lamb Chop. Hey, underneath all this wool, I'm just like any other nice guy. Very nice, Lamb Chop. Okay, good night, everybody. Where are you going, Sherry? There is still time for me to catch the last half of that TV show I almost forgot that I was missing most of. But I think, look. You guys can either go to sleep this minute or when Lamb Chop finishes his story. And then you all lie down, lids locked, lights out, lullabies over, and good night. In that order. You mean? I mean, at the end of your story, hit the sheets. All of you. I think she okay, means it. Okay, Sherry. Good night. Good night, Sherry. Good night. So, what's the story, Lamb Chop? It's called The Lion and the Mouse. But, you know, this story really needs two people to act out the parts. All right, I'm little, so I'll be the mouse. Hey, baby, I think I know that story. Could I be the lion? Yes. One day, a lion caught a mouse between his giant paws. About to eat the little mouse, he opened up his jaws, but the mouse said, Someday, sir, you may need a favor, too. And if you are kind to me right now, then I'll be kind to you. The lion laughed. Hey, baby, you're much too small to be of use to me. But just the same, he put him down. All right. He smiled. You're free. The little mouse said, Thank you, sir! And he scampered out of sight. And do you know the day came when that mouse proved he was right? For the lion was caught in a hunter's net, and he didn't know what to do. The mouse took the net in his tiny teeth. And he began to chew, and in minutes he had chewed a hole so big. I'm telling you, an entire troop of elephants could have gotten through. And from that day on, the lion and the mouse were the closest of friends. They lived happily ever after, so I'm told. And that's the way the story ends. Uh, wait a second, folks. Yes, Mr. Bailey? I failed to see the happiness in that story. It's... A story about a mouse who outsmarted a lion so the lion wouldn't eat him. You don't think the mouse was happy about that? You know, I'm sure that mouse would rather be the lion's pal than his pudding. In other words, happy ending. Yeah! What's the matter, Dandelion? I was just thinking of how mouse pudding would taste. Still, there's nothing happy about not being eaten up. I was just lucky. Hey, you still don't see it, do you, baby? Look, Mr. Bailey, what it is is this old mouse and this big old lion end up being as friends. You see? Like you and us. Oh, is that it? <laughs> I'm afraid I don't know how to make a story come out happy. I, I, I don't think I can do it. I, I really don't. Hey, baby, we'll help you. You will? You're our friend. What else are friends for? You can do it. You can do it. You can swim the ocean if you jump in with the notion. You can do it. Cause it's true. Anything you think is doable, you can do. Okay, here I go. There lived an emperor who thought he had everything. From his luxurious castle, he ruled over a lovely country full of loyal subjects. One day, one of those loyal subjects brought the lucky emperor the one thing he didn't have, a nightingale with a trilling, thrilling voice. Its feathers were not pretty, but this nightingale sang such a sweet song that the emperor put it into a cage by his bed, and everybody in the kingdom learned to sing the little creature's lilting tune. The bird didn't like being in a cage, but she was pleased to be making the emperor happy, so she didn't try to escape. One day, another loyal subject gave the emperor a mechanical nightingale. When you wound up this teeny bird, it seemed to sing the same song as the live bird. Hey, this is even better than the real thing, said the emperor. Now I can hear my favorite melody whenever I wish, not just when the bird wants to sing it. 
The real Nightingale realized the Emperor didn't need her anymore, so she escaped from the cage and flew back to her home in the forest. The Emperor wound the toy bird again and again, and it sang its song over and over, until one day the mechanical bird became overwound and it broke. Nobody could fix it. Soon after that, the Emperor became sick, and nobody could fix him either. And the day came when it was clear that the Emperor was going to die. Come on, Barely, we're going for a happy ending. Oh, dear. You can hack it. You can cut it. Be a great achiever. Just become a self-deliver. Don't let dying do you in. Cause when you feel undefeatable, you gotta win. Okay, happy ending, happy ending. The Emperor's loyal subjects were very sad, and the real Nightingale deep in the forest heard all the countrymen mourning for their dying Emperor. Well, the little bird flew straight to the Emperor's window and began to sing his sweet song. The Emperor opened his eyes. He smiled. He sat up. The tiny bird's tune was making the Emperor well. The Emperor begged, stay with me always. You shall only sing when you feel like it, and I will break that toy bird into a thousand pieces. Don't do that, said the nightingale. The toy bird did the best it could. And don't put me in a cage. Let me fly back to my forest home. I'll visit you often, and when I'm not here with you at your luxurious castle, I will spend my time singing to your loyal subjects and making them happy, too. And from all over your lovely countryside, I will bring you the news. But don't tell others when I come to visit. Just enjoy my song, and I'll help you enjoy your days as emperor. And the emperor, now a happy, healthy man, knew how lucky he really was. Hey, I did it! Yup, I did it. Took a course in winning. This could be a new beginning. Just remember, day out, day in. When you feel that you're uncatchable with a power that's unmatchable and the prize looks all so snatchable, that's when you're gonna win. I did it. A happy ending. I did it, didn't I? Yeah. But the question is, can I do it again? Any time. When you feel that you're uncatchable with a power that's unmatchable and the prize looks all so snatchable, you're gonna win. Boy, I came rushing up because I heard you guys all the way downstairs. I mean, even over the noise of the TV set, the place sounded like it was jumping. Was your show good? Well, what's going on on my TV show can't be as good as what's going on up here. Is your show over? Well, it is for me. I turned it off. It sounded like you were having more fun than I was. Come on, what did I miss? I do believe that I told the story with a happy ending. Well, I do believe congratulations are in order. Wait a minute. Wait one big, fat minute. Maybe that story doesn't have a happy ending. Oh, dear. Maybe the nightingale should have stayed in his cage. Hey, baby, come on. No, really. What if the nightingale flew away and a great big hungry hawk swooped down and grabbed that little bird and ate him up? What would you call that? Lunch. No, it's a sad ending. That's what it is. You know, Lamb Choppy, you got a way of throwing away the peaches and keeping the pits. Yes, if it was up to you, Sleeping Beauty would have had a runny nose and the prince never would have kissed her. You know, Lamb Chop, you never know how anything is really going to end. Something that seems good can turn out bad or... Something that seems bad can turn out good. You just have to enjoy life as it comes, one minute at a time. I don't understand. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm going to tell you all a story, and at first it's going to seem that it's a story with a good ending, and then it'll turn out bad, and then good again. Anyway, listen very closely. Why, you going to give us a test on it later? Could be. A father has a horse, and the son loves to ride that horse. That's good. The son wants a horse of his own, but the family can't afford two horses. That's bad. The father's horse runs away. That's bad. But later, the father's horse returns. That's good. And when it comes back, it brings with it another horse, a wild one, that has become attached.
much to the father's horse. That's good! But the wild horse is very wild, and that wild horse kicks down the barn door. That's bad! That night there's a fire in the barn. That's bad! But because the barn door was kicked down, both horses can escape from the fire. That's good! The son climbs on the wild horse's back, but that horse is very wild, and he throws the boy to the ground and breaks his leg. That's bad! The next day, the king's soldiers come to town. They seize all the able-bodied young men and take them to be soldiers and fight and perhaps die in a distant land. That's bad! They don't take the boy with the broken leg because when you have a broken leg, nobody could call you able-bodied, so he doesn't have to go off to war. Is there more? No! Oh, that's good! I really think that's very good! Of course, strictly speaking, it's not a happy ending because it's not the end. It's not! No, as long as you live, you can't really tell whether the things that happen to you will end up being good or bad. You just have to hang on tight and enjoy the ride. That's it, the end, which proves, dear friend, life will do things you never thought it would. Sure as good things sometimes turn out bad, bad things turn out good. Okay, now it's really time for bed. No more excuses. I have some more excuses. What now? I have a stomach ache. It's from all those cookies you ate. Yeah, well, cookie cramps are the worst. You know, Lanchuck, you shouldn't keep cookies under your pillow. Not cookies to eat after you've brushed your teeth. The cookies were not for me. They're for the tooth fairy. The tooth fairy doesn't like cookies. Well, I'm all out of teeth. Well, i got to tell you guys one thing. <laughs> it was more fun telling stories with you this evening than watching that old TV. Oh, yeah. But then, you know, it's always nicer to do something than to watch somebody else do it. Yeah, when they let me play in the game, that's more fun than sitting in the stands. I think it's better to be dancing than watching somebody else's feet have all the fun. Boy, do I agree. You know, Sally, I know a lot of people who just turn on the TV set and they sit there and they figure they're doing something. I don't understand it. Neither do I. Try to climb a tree, but give yourself a chance To find out how much you can do Oh, this music makes me want to dance Hey, baby, you're as graceful as a blindfolded hippopotamus Thank you, Grizzly I'm so tired of looking at other people's cooking Wishing I were them somehow The big step to take is the move you gotta make cheering for the home team to come through but it's a lot more thrilling when the cheer you're hearing is a great big cheer for you Replaced 
And it's really such a waste. Oh, yeah! Oh, man, I am so excited! Me too! All right, now what shall we do? Let's get up and go to the beach. We'll be the first ones there. Oh, I know better, better. Let's go to Disneyland. No, Dreamland. Dreamland is the only place you guys are going tonight. Remember sleep? <laughs> How about you, Lamb Chop? Are you ready for bed? Actually, I'm almost asleep. Okay. Everybody join hands for a minute. Come on. Close your eyes. No, keep holding hands. Now, can you feel anything special? I feel your ring. No, the feeling, Dandelion. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I Oh, I feel it now. Me too. You know, I really feel something. What is it? Well, that's the special feeling that we have for each other. Is it going to go away when we stop holding hands? It won't even go away when you wake up in the morning. You know, I would like to tell you, I'm really glad that I was able to spend the end of this lovely day with you. I love a happy end. I'd rather laugh than cry. Oh, I love it when the hero winds up getting the girl.